Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with The American Hustler with a subject that you are going to enjoy if you don't get pissed off because I might run up in you on this one. But before that, we need to pay some bills, baby. Check it out. Right below or in this video, if you're watching it on video, hit the link and get my HMS two month special. It's the best deal that I have going. It includes two months of the Hustler Mindset Project and every ebook that I've ever written, plus the audiobooks. Get it. It's a killer deal. With that, let's jump off into it. Getting paid. Are you worth your ambition? There are many people that say some things and some, I don't know, I've become a different kind of person and I filter everything in and I listen and I have a measured response versus just a reaction. And I heard something a few weeks ago and I was just out and about and it was this young guy and he was just talking about the job that he had, he was not being paid what he was worth. Me being the person that I am, I said, why is that? Just a simple question, no malice. Well, you know, I got to get paid. I got bills. I have things I want to do. I want to travel. And once again, me being the dude that I am, I said, it really sounds like a personal problem. Those are things that you want to do. You've entered into a contract with your employer. You give them time and hours and work of your life, and they give you a paycheck. That's the deal. And at that point, I was around people who had entitlement mentality, and everyone just was like, well, no, the wage needs to be higher, and they need to make more money. They need to pay us because these corporations are making so much money. And I just sat back, and I laughed, and I said, okay, okay. And I walked away. And the reason I laughed, I wasn't laughing at them, and I wasn't smiling at them. It was the wave of relief that came over my body because I used to think just like they are currently thinking. I was guilty of everything they thought. I was guilty of the same mindset. I didn't really understand how the world truly works. And it cost me big time. That's the reason I'm doing this podcast, because there are a lot of people who feel that they are worth a lot of money and are extremely frustrated that no one is paying them the money that they feel that they are worth. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Because you're not worth the money. You're not worth it. Not yet. Because if you were worth it at some point, the money would start to flow in if you were truly worth it. Let me give you some marketplace dynamics. I tend to look at the world in marketplaces from a personal level to a business level to a spiritual level. Everything's a marketplace. In the work marketplace right now, there are more workers than there are, we'll consider these premium jobs. There are far more workers than there are premium jobs. And we're going to say for the sake of this podcast, we're going to classify a premium job as $150,000 a year. That's a premium job. There's a lot of people who want to make $150,000 a year because it is like that tipping point. Because even with a high tax rate, you still net out around $90,000. And if you really know what you're doing and you've got the right tax shelters, advantages, you know how to use the tax code versus being pimped by the tax code, you might bring home 110, 115. And it's a totally different life because that's 10 G's a month. It's a totally different life. So that's what we're going to say for the premium job. Now, there are a lot of folks who want the job and they want it bad. They want, I mean, they want it so bad they can taste it. It's like those cookies in the window. They just came out the oven and they smell good. The smell is coming from the door to your nose and you want those cookies, but you're broke. 
you can't afford those cookies because you're broke. That's the same reason that you can't get that job because you are knowledge wise broke. You don't have enough intellectual assets to trade for that level of income. You are broke. Anytime that you're broke, you can't afford things that you want. And even more dire, you can't afford things that you need because you're intellectually broke. Why are you intellectually broke? You don't read. If it's not entertaining, you're not interested. That is one of the most damning propositions of the American lifestyle. If people are not entertained, they are not interested, even to their own detriment. I read stuff that actually it, I'm reading it and tears coming down my, my, my eyes because I'm like, man, this is so dry. Then I slap myself with reality and I press forward and then I'll put it down and I'll pick it up. There are some books I've read recently. I had to suffer through them, but I read them from you know from the cover to the end because I wanted that knowledge. I wanted that knowledge. You have to be hungry for the knowledge. And let's just, you know, really throw, some, I'm going to throw the gauntlet down because every time that I talk about, and statistically it's been proven, getting a degree in 2013 is not the path to financial success anymore. It's going to become even more damning in the next 10 years. And you want to know why? Because of technology. If a company can get a robot for $30,000 total sunk cost that would do the same job of 10 people that they would pay $40,000 a piece, even if that robot self combust after the end of a year, the companies will line up to buy them because of the significant cost savings. Start viewing what's going on from a cost savings viewpoint versus they should do it for the humanity. When you see that person on the street that's homeless, you don't scoop them up and take them to your house, give them a bath and let you wear their, your clothes. That would be humanity. That would be something good to do. There's a few people that do things like that. Most do not. Most are afraid of the homeless. Most can't wait to get the fuck away from the homeless as fast as possible. I've talked to homeless people. I've said, hey, you know, I'm not going to give you any money. But I will buy you some coffee. I will buy you a meal. But I want to hear your story. I want to know what happened to you. And I've bought, you know, I've done this for people who were like highly aromic. They had a little, and they were kicking. And I was like, you know what? I'm here for the knowledge. I'm going to buy this dude some fish or whatever. And he's going to tell me his story. When you peel back out of yourself and go for the knowledge and the benefits of the knowledge, it doesn't have to be entertaining because what's entertaining is the results. That's entertaining. But with this college degree thing, I'm going to break it down for you. If you get a degree and you get the wrong degree and you spend too much money, it will seriously impact your life for decades. It will affect how much house you can buy. It will affect the type of car that you drive. And sure, you'll see someone who has a degree. They had a scholarship and, you know, they're working for this great company and this great job. And they always have money. And they're saying, well, the reason I'm doing this is because of the degree. No, they were doing it because they were already fucking smart. This is the little secret that higher education does not let you know. If you're a very smart person and you have above average intelligence or even a genius IQ, you don't need college. You don't need it at all. You're smart enough to figure out something that will make you money. Because it's a cultural narrative that for a person to be considered educated, that they must go to college, people are pulled into it. When you really look back, because, you know, this is once again from knowledge. Back in the 60s and 50s, people matriculated from high school to medical school, law school. As the competition increased, they added more and more layers, which added more and more complexity, which added more cost. The cost of education has escalated faster than anything except for health care. Because you're told that you must have it. And if you must have it, you will spend whatever you have to spend to get it. And that is... The hook. Because many people are devoid of concrete critical thinking skills. 
is if you sat down and you did the math, and if you and, and the thing is, this information is on the internet. You don't have to do what I had to do years ago, which is go to the library, talk to the little lady with the square glasses, and say, "Hey, can I get that volume back there in the special price?" The the stuff that they do not let you check out. Like for most of you, they don't know. There's two dictionaries. There's the dictionary and there's the thesaurus. The dictionary has maybe four hundred thousand words. The thesaurus has like a million. Big deal. If you are typing on your computer and you don't you spell you put a word in there that you know is correct and you don't get an underline, that means your vocabulary is not as big as it should be. Because if you have a large vocabulary, you will put something in word pages and spell checks are gonna think it's wrong because it's not in the database. And then when you go confirm it, it's like yes, that word is spelled correctly. And why am I saying this? Because people with larger vocabularies. Prime example, hate him if you want to, he is a bastard, but Rush Limbaugh made a multi-million dollar career for having an adroit command of the English language. This is not an endorsement, this is saying listen to him, it's just check the technique. Because I listened to Rush, I listened to Neil Bortz, I even listened to Hannity when he was the Hanitizer. Because see, this is the thing, all of these guys had history. And if you look at what they used to do versus what they're doing now, you will see a 180 degree turn with all of them. They figured being on the Republican ticket, except for Neil Bors, who was a libertarian, would pay more money. Because, see, this is the thing. And this goes back to being worth your ambition. People who care about their causes, which could be your education, could be your financial situation, will pay to support their cause. People who have entitlement mentality will not pay to support their cause. Who runs the country? The people that will pay to have their causes supported. And this goes back to, are you worth your ambition? Because people have ambition that is big as the city of Atlanta. But they're not worth that ambition because they don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy and they're not working. They're just walking around. When I get my money right, I'm going to have this life. Fool, you already have a life. It's just janky. See, this is the thing that people say that when I get just right or when the stars and the moon and Saturn and all these places align in the proper axis, then I'll start living. That's a misnomer. You are living. You're just not living in the manner that you wish to live. Let that facade of bullshit go because not only you're not tricking me, but you're tricking yourself to sleep. And I can tell you from experience, time moves faster than you think. So you have these people and they're like, they they have these grand ambitions, but no, they don't even have ordinary work ethic. As a business owner, when I hired people, one of my biggest frustrations was there was people I had to micromanage. I didn't want to micromanage them, but I had to or it wasn't going to get done. So I am paying you to work me. I was not a happy camper. Once again, that's why I went to my Latino workers. Because you can say what you want to about Mexicans or other people or immigrants. But when I got myself a group of the Hispanic dudes, work happened. Things were moving Asses was moving, shit was shaking, stuff was getting done. That's the mentality that you have to have if you want to be worth your ambition. Because folks are like, I am going to be a millionaire. You know, the secret. Now, I know a little bit about the secret, but see, there's a few things that the secret doesn't discuss. But if you were to study and learn about these other laws then the laws of the secret would be more powerful. Because I could tell you, once again from experience, if you had the audacity to write a goal on a sheet of paper and do nothing else, don't come up with an action plan, don't have a timetable, the chances of that goal happening because you pulled it out of your head, you threw it into the universe, and you wrote it on that sheet of paper, the probability goes up 50% just from doing that. So there is merit to the secret because it's about controlling your mental environment. Now, if you take that goal, 
that dream, that wish, whatever out of your head, put it on paper, come up with an action plan, a timetable, then your chances of achieving that goes up to 90%. So you want 50% or 90%? Shoot, there's some people who have 0% because it stays up in their head and it, and it knocks up with that episode of, you know, of Big Brother or whatever else insipid show that they were watching versus sitting there and feeding their mind some type of information that was going to either make them healthier, smarter, or wealthier. You, We all have only 24 hours in any given day. There's just some people that do different things with that time. I have one television in my home. Sometimes that sucker doesn't come on during the day. I mean, it, it seriously, I know it's like, oh, it's been a few days since I watched television because I've got stuff to do. If your situation is so janky that you're struggling to pay your bills, you don't have money that you want, you're not living in the house that you want, you're not dressing in the clothes you want, you don't have the spouse that you want, you don't have a lot of fucking time to be watching television. You cannot get... If you're not out there getting, this is the thing. This is the thing that cracks me up because I bristle with pissed offness if someone says, Oh, Glendon, you got lucky. Lucky? Fuck lucky. Fuck lucky. Yeah, my voice is going up because someone said that and I wanted to bitch slap him. I was like, You do not know the shit that I went through to get to where I am. You have no clue. There was people who told me to my face I was a fucking idiot for letting the store charging business go. And before that, I was foolish for wanting to be a writer. You shouldn't be a writer. See, this is the thing. When you're out there in the world, everything that goes on in your sphere of influence, your friends, your families, all, all these people that talk to you, it has an impact. It has an impact. So if you're in the wrong crowd of people with this grand ambition and these people only subscribe to going to work, coming home, kicking back Monday through Friday, going out Saturday and Sunday and becoming so intoxicated that they don't even remember the good time that they had. You might not be worth your ambition. You might be fooling yourself. You might be Boo Boo the Fool and the King of Fuckeryville because nothing happens without action. Nothing happens without intent. If you're out there talking all this smackety smack smack of how good you're going to be and all these wonderful things you're going to do and you have put forth no effort towards your business in the last six months, you are a joke. And the joke is on you because life will pass on so fast. I don't care if you're 16 and listening to this going like, I got plenty of time. When you get to be 40 something and you look back at 16, you're going to go, oh, my God, it moves so fast. And if you're 16 and you've got good parents and they're providing a stable environment, be a kid. Enjoy it. Because when you get grown, older, an adult, one of my friends put on Facebook the other day, one of the worst decisions he ever made was becoming an adult. And people were chiming in. This shit was funny as hell. And me, I was like, well, I never grew up because I'm a Toys R Us kid. And it was funny because I really never did grow up. I never got to be grown because grown is dead to me. Grown is I am now finished. It is a complete masterpiece. The book is written and there's the end. To me, that's death. So that's why I never grew up. That's why you see me with the hip hop gear on. And if you ever saw me in public, I might have on some very colorful sneakers. I like color. And that's just part of keeping myself invigorated and enjoying this thing in life. With having this ambition, you have to own the ambition and you have to be serious. You have to change how you talk to yourself. When I was a buster, a bum, that person that was not worth my ambition. Because the thing is, even as a kid, I had big ambitions. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to do all this stuff. But I didn't have the keys to connect the dots. Because one, I was young. 
So I actually give myself a pass on that because I was a kid. You don't know shit when you're a kid. You think you know stuff and you think you're smart, but you're a kid. And when I tell people in my family that and it's like, yeah, I'm not a kid. I'm an adult. I'm like, okay, are you supporting yourself? No, you're a kid. And this is something else. I don't care if you're 50. When you put yourself in the position of a child, you will be treated as such. I don't care how old you are. It, it will not fail to happen. Trust me on that. So I had to rewrite my habits. And what I mean by that is I had a very bad habit of saying, I am going to do X. I am going to do B. I'm going. Then one day when I was sitting on the bus, because I was a bum, and I'm not saying people that ride the bus are bums. I'm saying I was a bum because I could have been doing much better. I was just not properly utilizing my mind. I just caught myself in mid thought. I was like, I'm about to say, I'm about to do this. And I became a little depressed because I hadn't done shit. It was just like, I am going to, I am going to just like a, a record that was stuck in the groove. And I was like, okay. And that day I made this decision. I'm not going to say that I'm going to put more energy, time and effort into doing versus talking about doing. It sounds so simple. It was one of the hardest personal changes I've ever made in my life. It was just your bad habits will crawl up on you and strangle you when you're trying to run from them. They're just like, no, come back here. We're not done with your ass yet. (laughs) Come here. I mean, it was just backslide. And I was like, I'll start. I have a good week where I accomplish everything. And it was just a tip. Set yourself a bunch of really small goals that you know you can achieve. You know, without shadow doubt, and then build on them, and then make them a little harder and a little harder, and just kind of create a habit of winning. And that's what I had to do because I would make these big goals and just miserably fail. And I had to learn how t- my process of goal setting: set this goal, achieve it, then raise it. Set this goal, achieve it, then raise it. It's very elementary. It's very simple. You've probably heard this before, but when you put it in a practical application over a long period of time, amazing things happen. But I had to break that habit and it took me about a year. I'll be straight up with you. It took me about a year. It was a rough year. And I and this is kind of where it kind of pivoted because I was that was one of the reasons that I was a good salesman when I was at Powertel because I set goals and I would try to, you know, raise the bar. So when I got laid off that final time, I was already in the action mode. And that's probably why when the dude offered me two weeks, I said, No, I'll leave now because I went home and took action. If you leave this podcast with nothing else than that, learn to be action oriented. Because even if you mess up, because you're moving, you're moving energy around, you're creating, you're going to get more out of that than being stagnant and just waiting for life to come to you. I said this to someone who doesn't talk to me that much anymore because we're talking about writing and she was a literary purist. It's like, so when does the muse come to visit you? And I didn't know this chick that well, you know, she was friendly. I was friendly. We knew the same people. And I just said in mixed company, Oh, I don't wait for the muse. I go track that bitch down, bring her to my lair, sit her in the chair and say, perform bitch. She just kind of looked at me picked up a drink, and walked away. (laughs) This is a true story. She just walked away. She is not, I've not talked to her since. And the thing is, (laughs) I was 100% serious. I was really, really serious because I I will will share this with you. Uh, There was some I don't do and some people are pissed off, but oh well. It's better to be pissed off than pissed upon. Then again, some people like being pissed upon. Anywho, I used to do this thing called Passionate Friday. And it was a way for me to get pussy. And it worked very well. I write these lovely romantic poems. And I would send them out to a listserv. This was how, this was like freaking 90s. And... Being a procrastinator, a lot of times these Passionate Fridays were not done until like, because the good thing was I put them out Thursday night. So, you know, Friday morning, they'll be there. Passionate Friday. Well, 
So much of that stuff was written between 11 and 11.59. It is it's just amazing because I'm procrastinating and it's like, okay. And what I didn't understand, and this is why I'm saying when you take action, you get stuff out of it that you just don't realize you you get until later on. And what that whole process taught me was how to induce creativity. I got to the point where I could snap my fingers and boom, I had it. I didn't have to, you know, like you're straining on the toilet, like, oh, nothing happening. Oh, no, my stuff was regular and smooth. It was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm out of here. It didn't even smell. And, you know, I'm making jokes of it, but doing that for free, just for a friend, well, actually, what? Actually, it worked out very well, but I got out of that whole process how to learn how to put myself in a creative mode anytime that I wanted to, anywhere that I am, because sometimes I wrote that stuff in airports. Sometimes I wrote that stuff in, on the bus. Sometimes I wrote that. I mean, I just learned to be creative wherever I needed to be. And I didn't really realize how valuable a skill that was until I started writing full time. You know, I don't get writer's block. And it's not to say I don't struggle because sometimes I'm working on a piece and, you know, me following my own advice. Sometimes I write stuff that I just don't like. I'm not I'm not in love with it, but it has to be written. And I think, you know, this is a turd. And sometimes with these podcasts and videos, I'm just like, man, this actually sucks, right? And I put it out, and people are like, man, I like this. This is one of the best ones you ever did. I'm like, okay, fine, all right. And I will, you know, just be straight up again. When I upload stuff, there is a certain level of fear because I'm like, you never know what the hell is going to happen. Because, you know, I have videos that I absolutely deplored that actually are some of my best viewed videos. It's kind of crazy. Then there's ones I thought, yeah, this is going to go out the park. They're going to love it. And people like, oh, wake me up when you get to something better, Glendon. <laughs> but that's being worth your ambition. You have to take chances. You cannot say you have ambition and you're doing this stuff and you're doing the damn thing when there are no tangible results. A tangible result is if you want to make uh, horseshoes, you go out and you buy iron and you get yourself a forge. A blow t- you do whatever you can so you can clang those horseshoes out. Because once again, when I hear people talk about I don't have what I need, I was a poor little black child in Alabama. And I wanted to lift weights, but my mama didn't have no money. I ain't had no money. I fashioned a pull-up bar. From an axle of a car, I took some cement that I found on the side of the road, mixed it up, and put it in a galvanized bucket to create a weight. Didn't know know how much that sucker weighed, but it was heavy. I literally turned my front yard into a gym because I wanted to do it. And see, that's something else that I think that we lose when we go from, and that's one of the reasons I never grew up, because I, I, I'm always doing stuff. My, some of my friends are like, yeah, what happened this week? Because I'm always getting myself into stuff. It is when you are will deal with the consequences of fucking up willingly and openly, you can get some amazing things out of your life. And I remember... <laughs> We used to have, I don't even know the name of these trees, but they had vines on it. And there was this property in front of our house. And there was this like cliff where, and the vines were just there, you know, tantalizing to a young boy. So we would take off running, jump off the cliff and grab the vine and swing out, then come back in. If I showed that to you on YouTube right now, you would say, Glendon, you are freaking insane because... One day, and I was a chubby kid, the bunch. So one day I grabbed the vine and the vine said, fuck you. (laughs) And I went tumbling down the hill, (laughs) landed on my ass and got up grinning like, all right, my ass was hurting. I mean, I landed on a rock. I was walking kind of stiff and I went back up there and took off running and grabbed another vine. But fortunately, that vine said, hey, no, we like chubby kids, but (laughs) <laughs> the stuff I used to do as a kid and I think you know in some ways that our our young boys are really screwed in that aspect because I had two acres to run around 
It was a garden here. I mean, the whole front yard was just pretty much a scientific experiment. And yes, I had a microscope kit and a science kit. And I used to go out there like I was Dr. Doolittle and shit. But that whole owning your ambition is going to be shown to be evident by your action. Because you can want all day long. You can dream all day long. You can have the best connections all day long but until you put action behind all that it's just nothing it's just a pretty dream that you can roll around in your head before you go to bed and one day you're going to be 65 75 85 95 105 and that little pretty little dream gonna still be rolling around your head and you're gonna be a miserable old person i think those guys that was like get off my lawn those guys like sometimes there were some things they wanted to do, but they didn't do them. And they got old and they got bitter and they got mean. I don't want you to be like that. Because understand, we're living in times where you can have and do so much. I'm not going to sell you that you could be anything. If you have like a piss poor math aptitude and a piss poor work ethic, chances you being a rocket scientist are pretty slim. Now, if you're just marginally bright, but you are a seriously hard worker, the chances of you being a rocket scientist are pretty damn good. Because that, that hard work, that work ethic, that application of effort, that just not giving up is such an incredible asset to have because it, it will just do so much for you. So while you're sitting there with your ambition, and the reason I'm I'm talking about this is I am not a genius, but I have seen certain trends before. And I'm going to talk about YouTube because about seven months ago, some fuckery began that, that had my name all up in its mouth. And I said something about the two month mark that, yeah, this is going on. And within a year, all these people, they'll be gone or their time on YouTube will be greatly reduced. Six months later, it's pretty much happened. Time is greatly reduced. This time next year, be gone. And I'm going to tell you why. When you are investing in fuckery versus investing in success, it's going to bitch slap you. you. You're out doing shit to people. Like, And this is one of the reasons I pulled down some of my videos. Because, once again, I'm not grown. I'm still a kid in many ways. Which means I still fuck up. And I looked at that experience because my experience on YouTube has dictated to me that I just need to leave certain people alone because I don't know those people. I am just sitting back assuming shit that I have no clue to. Is it right? Wrong? Now, some things I am like, I'll talk about because it's 100 percent clear this fool, this person's a fool. I'll do that on occasion. But I really pulled a lot of stuff down and left it alone. And I've learned this is actually August 6th which is coming up very soon, will be my fourth year on YouTube. I've learned in these four years that when you get distracted by fuckery, you actually take money out of your pocket. So when this fuckery was going on and people were doing all this stuff, I buckled down and I created Operation Ignore Bitch. And I worked harder. And then some of the shit was pissing me off. I'm not going to lie. The shit, and I'm not going to really go into it, but a lot of shit was racist. Uh, it was totally unfair. And a lot of people I thought were cool kind of went along with it until it became so egregious that even the most, it's like, look, dude, that shit's totally out of bounds. And while this was going on, I kept working. I kept working. I kept writing. I kept working. I kept writing. I kept working. I kept writing. And I became more successful as they started to crumble. Because this is the thing. Fuckery is like that big, pretty, that big titty, big booty, pretty, pretty woman in the club that is one of the meanest helpers on the planet. From the outside, it looks so good. It's so attractive. It's so seductive. You go over there buying it, drinks and stuff, and then you realize you broke. That's what fuckery does. And I ain't gonna lie, I was chomping at the bit. You know, I threw a few blows. I'm not gonna, and my hands ain't clean. I said a few things, but I said it in a manner that got it off my chest, but did not 
have me going deeper into the rabbit hole. And at a certain point, I was like, this is it. I'm not saying anything else about it. I'm not going to, I don't care what they do. I'm not watching the videos. I am moving on because I got too much stuff to do. That's owning your ambition because all this other stuff is a distraction. And I'm going to tell you, there ain't nothing that feels as good as success. And the thing is, you don't have to rub it in their face. Mm Mm-mm. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You just have to be doing well. And it kills them. Oh, just like stabbing them in the heart, like rapid fire. Ah, just kills them. And you've done nothing except do the right thing for you. And I, I will tell you something else that happened recently. This chick I asked out a few years ago. She said no. And this is my rule. Just my rule. If a chick says no... I am not like Pepe Le Pew. I'm not boring. No, because I'm going to judge the whole situation, body language, whatever. And she said a strong no. And I was like, fine. And I said these words, um, you know, because she's like, you know, we could be friends, but sometimes I'm not interested. And I was like, well, if it ain't a date, I'm not interested because I got options. And never bother again. Well, <clears throat> some shit happened. And it was an event. And we were... I was really not paying any attention, but every time I turned around, she was in my face. This shit was funny as hell. It was totally funny as hell. And that's how that's what I'm telling you. This shit gets to be good. You know, you don't have to do any things. You don't have to be mean to anybody. You just have to own your ambition. Be cool with it. Because I was cracking up. I was like, oh, this is too funny. This is hilarious. And you know, me, you know, in the gene verse, you know, I can get younger, better pussy. So <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> was that crass? I don't give a fuck. Cause that's exactly how I felt. I was like, oh well. And um <laughs> last few weeks have been fucking fantastic. I just gotta tell you that. They just were in so many levels. So many levels. But when you own your ambition, when you when you work. And the whole thing is, it's about work and realizing at times you're going to fail. At times you're going to make mistakes. You are not perfect, but you can develop the perfect hustle. You can develop the perfect work ethic, which is you're not going to stop. There's times you're going to struggle and you're going to feel constricted. You're just going to feel like, oh, this is not going anywhere. And you're just moving forward millimeter by millimeter. But you're moving forward and One of the things with American culture is we like what I call a grand leap that you are dusty and ashy. Then you go real clean, really quick. But that's dangerous because if you do and it happens and you make that kind of trajectory, it's real easy for you to get bitch slapped back down to dusty. But when you build your success over time, it takes a lot to knock you down because you've built it up pebble by pebble, brick by brick. I mean, it's substantial. It's substantial because, you know, when the fuckery was going on and people was like, I'm going to shut this business down and blah, blah, blah. My business actually became better. But it became better because I start, worked harder. Understand, when these things are going on and with your ambition, you have to ask yourself this question. Do I want it bad enough? And if you pause, hesitate, you don't want it that bad. Like when uh, I used to bid on Eunice. Eunice, I want it because one of the clampers remarked. And he, and this is one of my tales, and he knew it. It's like when I got on something and the bid was going, it's like 100, 110. I mean, no hesitation, just bam. And it would go. I remember one unit. It was at 1,000 when I jumped in, and the guy was trying to knock me off. It was like 1,300, like 1,350. I, boom, boom, got to twenty seven fifty. Because he said twenty seven hundred. I said twenty seven fifty. I mean, before twenty seven hundred even finished leaving his lips, and he was just ah, threw his hands up and walked off. That was a pretty good unit. I didn't like make crazy money, but I tripled my money. And just taking that ownership. And you know, part of the reason that people don't want to take ownership is when you take ownership, it's yours. And when things go bad. There's a there's a name tag on it. It's yours. So it's like, ah, people can laugh and point. But take ownership of your ambition. 
become worth your ambition. I'm not telling you to dampen your dreams. I'm telling you to raise your activity level. I'm telling you to raise your commitment. I'm telling you to actually increase your game. Or as they like to say in the street, step the fuck up hard. Because I like to go out and have a good time. But honestly, I love what I do. And I think some people don't really understand that because it's like you work so hard. I'm having fun doing this podcast. This is fun because I get to talk smack and I will make money for talking smack. If you can't have fun talking smack and making money, I I mean, seriously, you know, I might even do a cookie show one day where I'm uh, actually in the kitchen making cookies and stuff and talking smack. That's an idea. Hmm. Let me marinate on that. And this is this is another thing. I should warn you when you become an action oriented person and you have goals, you create it's it's like you got to create some type of methodology on the, how to handle the creative. Here's this goal, this implementation, because I have like a list of stuff I want to do, but I can't do everything. So I put it on the list and I look at it because the thing is, there's always something going on. If you watch the YouTube channel, you know, there's. It's changing, you know, there's always something going on. So there's a list of goals that are what I call my daily goals, and there's the weekly goals, monthly goals, so on and so forth. And then when I get to a lull or something I'm doing isn't working out, all right, let's look at this. And, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of times I kill babies. Like, yeah, I love that idea, but, you know, I have more information. I looked at it. It's not for me. And it could be a killer ideal, but... I try to design stuff that will fit into the channel I already have, like with resellology. I was going to go to go gangbusters with it, but I realized it's like, does that really make sense? And it's like, nah, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, resellology is going to be kind of here and there, whereas the main focus is on the YouTube videos, the podcasting, writing, hustler, Uni- hustler mindset project, hustler university, creating your own economy, how to make a living without a job. That's where the energy is going because it makes sense. It's fun. I'm good at it. And, you know, people like it because that's one of the best things about it. People really like this stuff. And there's more stuff coming, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's that's the whole deal with having ambition. There's nothing wrong with dreaming big. There's nothing wrong with really wanting something different or better for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's plenty hella wrong with being a punk-ass bitch to your ambition. Your ambition is saying, come to me. And you're like, ah, I want to watch TV. Ah, I want to play PlayStation. Ah, I want to jack off. Oh, you know, Bill's smoking a joint. I want to take a toke. If you treating your ambition like a side chick, it will leave you. Just saying. You know, you got to make that ambition the main thing in your life. And for some people, that's going to be a little intimidating because... People get weird. If you remember that episode of South Park where the little dude didn't want to mess with Facebook and everybody was all on him like, you're on Facebook and you didn't friend me and all that pressure. And he was like, I didn't want to be on this damn shit. That's kind of what happens when you're chasing your dream and your ambition. People feel neglected and they feel that, hey, you don't care about them. And that's not true. It's just you're doing your thing. So. In the future, I'm going to talk about balance because that's another reason that I am doing what I'm doing with my thing is I need to be more balanced because my shit was like way out of whack. It was like 95% work, 5% play. Kind of insane when I think about it. But um, in the beginning, when you start a new enterprise, it may be like it may be 100% work, no play. That's just reality of starting a business or um, owning your ambition. I mean, some people may live like this for three or four or five years, but... When you do it, you get stuff out of it that can last you and benefit you or pay you for the rest of your life. So it's worth it in my estimation. So that's the deal. Are you owning your ambition or is your ambition owning you? Ask yourself that question. Because if your ambition is spanking your ass, that's not a good look, player. It's not a good look. All right, this is Glendon Cameron. I will see you on the good side.